Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings f Arsenal 2, Everton 1. Uh, yeah, defeat at the end minutes. But we went down fighting and we give a good account of ourselves down there today. And obviously disappointing that we didn't get something out of the game. Felt like we were cruelly robbed of something with the uh, goal that was given um, after clearly a handball. Really, wasn't it? So let's get into it anyway. Uh, John Pickford in goal. Um, big game for him. Four saves. Um, and I thought he was just had an all round good game today. Made one really good save in the first half. One save in the second half, which was sort of a hit between him and Brantwaite, sort of blocking the ball. Um, but again, showed showed everything he's about today and why he, why he has been. Um, I don't know, just sit this season, people just seem to be giving him a little bit more respect than Everton. Obviously, Everton's clean sheets have been, um, you know, big again. They've stood out to getting clean sheets. It's not just about Jordan Pickford making saves, it is actually clean sheets. And, um, yeah, I think he's been excellent this season, and I think he did a pretty good job today as well. So, I would give um, Jordan Pickford a 7.8. Nine for today's performance. Seamus Coleman. Uh, I was surprised he started this game. I must admit, I, I was surprised. He surprised he started it. Um, it's it's you know it's diminishing returns now, isn't it? From from Seamus, he's got all that experience and obviously he uses it uh, as much as he can. Um, but players are getting around them, are getting quicker as he's getting slower, and players are moving the ball around them quicker as. And it's getting harder, isn't it? It's getting harder for him all the time. Not that he doesn't put a shift in for us and uh, work hard and, and 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 try to do his job well and use all that experience. It's just getting it's getting harder for him. He, yeah, it's you know he's not really offering any much, that too much going forward as well. So it is it is getting harder, but we have to sort that position out sort of once and for all this summer, whether it's Nathan Patterson or somebody else, because it's. It can't be left. It can't be left to Seamus again, surely. You know, he just, he just, come on. He, he hasn't got that in his tank, and he's worked his bollocks off for us, and for us for the whole time he's at Everton. And no, it, you know, some something has to, something has to sort of give there. I think um, if he is, you know, we expect him to be at the club next season, but you know, he has to definitely be the backup. Has to be. Um, yeah, Seamus, I would give a 6.2 for today's performance. Ashley Young on the other side, who I actually didn't think had a particularly bad game till he made, obviously, the huge mistake for the second goal. Um, five out of six ground deals won, one out of three aerial deals won. Um, you know, four tackles... Uh, one block shot, one to clearance, but unfortunately one header that led to a goal and so, you know a stupid cross field pass in the last minute that they've got onto. You know whether it's handball or not, they've got onto it and they've won the game because of it. And he's that's what people remember. And I just what <laughs> the thing about him and Sheamus is Sheamus pretty much is so risk averse because he understands the consequences. Where Ashley Young is a player that you look at and think. You've played at the highest level. You've, you've won a Premier League and and all those things. You're sort of still playing on the edge. Where it's like, no, you can't. You can't play like that. And he makes these, he does these risky things week in and week out. And it's why fans get fed up with them. Even though he does have generally okay games as a as a backup player in these all positions. And that one today was just was just ridiculous. And there's no need for that pass at that time. And you. you it's cost us the game ultimately. It really has. So, um, you know, he's staying for another season, and again, he he has to just be a backup player. But he has to realise his age and stop start cutting out these stupid mistakes, these risky balls that are costing us. So, um, just for that one mistake, five point eight because it was just horrendous, horrendous mistake. James Tarkowski again, really solid game. Five out of eight ground duels won. Two only two out of uh, two out of five aerial deals one, which is not like him, but again pretty solid. Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you're playing an Arsenal team that are that are knocking on the door the whole time. But again, it, he's just you know he pretty steady 
does his job. Um, three tackles, two block shots, four clearances. He's just steady in everything he does, and he has been all season. Him and um, Jared Brandbite have just been so steady all season. So uh, will that be the last time we see that partnership play together? Probably, probably, probably. But uh, Taki, I give a seven for today. Jared Brandwaite, I, I didn't. You know what? Two out of three ground duels, won one out of two aerial duels. Didn't seem himself today. Little stupid little mistakes, like one in the first half, trying to play a ball across the box, got caught out. They nearly scored from it. Uh, one in the second half, got caught. Lad run through, and he he did save that. Um, a little mix up between him and Pickford with the ball nearly it was Pickford's ball and he sort of just got in the way of Pickford and I said I don't know whose mistake that was because it all happened so quickly but um, yeah it just he just didn't quite see himself he didn't quite seem I don't know focused I don't know I don't know what it was but um I was just trying to read his body language at the end as well when all the players came over and he just seemed quite subdued and on his own again a little bit like last week. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. but uh, Seven block shots, four... Uh, seven Koreans, are, sorry, four block shots. Just not quite himself today. And again, you look at him and think, is that the last time we'll see him in an Everton shirt? I mean, we really hope, we really hope not, but... Yeah, really, really hope not, but you know, you just you just think maybe it is, maybe it is the last time, but yeah, yeah, really, really sad, such a talent, but that is the way it is. We if we get a huge offer, we'll accept it. We, I'm sure you know, I'm sure we'll accept it. So Jared Brandfeet had gave us six point nine for today. Atisha Ghana Gay um got the goal. <laughs> it's a big deflection, but he got his goal. Uh four out two out of four ground duels won. Uh, no aerial duels again. Again, good game, good busy game. Uh, getting about the pitch. Uh, fifty-four touches, eighty-three percent pass accuracy. Um, and got his goal. Got his goal. Two key passes as well. Um, all round again. Just had a just had a good solid game. For, uh, just and again when we talk about when we talk about the fullbacks, then this is a player that is obviously. Um, uh, aging, but loads of experience and still can do a really good job. And it's just been brilliant in the last five or so weeks for Everton when Everton needed them to. You know when he got back into the sort of back in the side, he was out because I think he had an injury. But and his his what his wife had a baby as well, and he got back into the side. I think after Chelsea, and he was he's just been brilliant since then. He's so important. He's such a talisman for us as well. And when he scored, he absolutely loved it. He just seemed to celebrate it for ages and. Just seems to love being at Everton as well, and I think you know, not someone maybe has always got the love, but I do think that Evertonian should should really um, give it back because I just think he's such an important player for us. He really is. He really is brilliant um, at times. So I would give him a seven point eight for today. Uh, I'm a two oh nine. I mean, listen, this is a player who just who just. Splits opinion, but listen. What I would say is his numbers today are just f- f- fantastic. Six out of six ground duels won. Two out of two aerial aerial duels won. Um, dribble attempts one out of one. Uh, long balls one out of two. Forty four touches, seventy nine percent pass accuracy. Um, tackles four. Uh, but the other side of the game is he just gets caught. With the or he gives the ball away stupidly, um, in areas that again are risky, that can lead the opposition to get into good areas, and that's what frustrates fans. I understand that. That's what frustrates fans. And it's just one. Of, listen, he's 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 so he's so good for breaking the press as well. You you give him the ball with his back to the, and he does that little turn and he's away. And you know, if he was in a team that was. Higher up the pitch, higher up the table, sorry, and he was. They take more risks because that's how you break. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That's how. <coughs> excuse me. That's how you break through. You can understand that, but in a team that's so risk, so risk averse to us, 
you just can't afford to give the ball away because we seem to get punished all the time by that kind of thing. And this is a player who will be better in a team that takes more chances. And again, was this the last time we've seen Emma doing our play in Nevinshire? Probably. But it, this is the two sides of his, the way he plays. His numbers are absolutely fantastic. But given that the ball away, two, three, four times away, really cheaply in stupid areas. I mean, there's one today where he did the little spin and then he just sort of like fell over and then got back up. And it's just like, you can understand why people get frustrated with him. But listen, if he goes and he does go to a team that are higher up, whether it's this country or another, I think that those risk factors will, will, will help him. And those risk factors will probably help us sell him because he is good on the ball and he is willing to take risks, but doesn't always suit us. But as I said, his numbers are fantastic there. So uh, I'm a duo Nana. I would give, uh, you know, I give him, I give him a seven. I give him a seven just because those numbers are absolutely fantastic. Um, ahead of those two, Decore. I didn't think Decore had. Uh, much of a game today, if any, you know, if I'm honest. Um, won two out of uh, sorry, won four out of nine ground duels, no, no one out of one aerial duels. Just again, not really getting into the final third. Uh, dribble attempts three, two were two successful, but just not getting just not getting into the final third enough for me. Just you know, he's 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 just not was wasn't doing that today, and he was finding himself sometimes on the left and just trying to pick up the bits but it just never really worked for him um, and again just trying to be just try, ending up playing that midfield role again and uh, deeper midfield role sorry but not in not in any areas to really hate them so I would give uh, I'm a, uh, I'd delight the Corey I would give um, I would give a 6.5 for today's performance it will be interesting next season what we do in that position. Um, whether it's something McNeil can adapt to or or Chimiti or, or or who knows, but we'll, it will be interesting to see whether he uh, maybe he just needs a full summer and a and a good pre season after the injuries he's had, the couple of injuries he's had back to back in the winter. But we'll wait to see. Um, James Garner obviously pushed out on that right hand side again. Not ideal for him. Uh, four out of six ground duels won. One out of one aerial duels. So that's good from that point of view. One dribble attempt uh, successful out of one. Sixty four percent pass accuracy. Only thirty five touches. It's difficult to get him into the game out there because it's not. It's not obviously where he does his best work, um, and he's not. You know, he's got to stay. In his position, in position, he's got to stay in that position, and if he's got to do the defensive job there, of course, like he does anyway. But it's not like the play where he is in midfield, where he's, um, you know, tackling in the game on the ball. He's stuck out wide, and he's not involved for long periods of time. And it was, it was definitely like that today. Although when he was on it, he did, he did all right, he did okay, but just not on the ball. And he, but he's just doing a job out there for us, isn't he? So James Garner would give a six point seven. Uh, Dwight McNeil on the other side. Uh, one is the free kick with a decent run, the free kick that we scored from. Um, guilty as well of giving the ball away a little bit cheaply today. 49 touches, 81% pass accuracy. Uh, sometimes he's made he made some nice little runs. Dribble attempts, 2 out of 2, um, which is good. Um, again, hard work, a 5 out of 8 from the ground duels. Um, but again, just sometimes giving the ball away cheaply. And obviously being so one-footed doesn't really help him, and he's turning back and he's looking for a player. But it's, but he's a player who's got, who's got. We know he's got talent, and we know he's got ability. Being so one-footed, I've mentioned it loads of times, just doesn't help him. But again, will we see that? Will we see a positional change next season, or does it help that he plays on the left and drips over? Well, if it it does, but then you need a good left back. Um. But, you know, listen, the run he made for the goal today, for the free kick, was a good run. But, but again, he's another player who's just okay, isn't he? He's, 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 obviously, he's obviously limited and he is, he is what he is. So, Dwight McNeil, I would give a 6.7 for today's performance. Um... 
and that leaves me with Dominic Calvert Noon, who I thought played well, considering how much he was on his own today. I thought he held the ball up really, really well. I thought he battled really well, and I thought he put himself about really, really well. I think the game not changed. That's the wrong thing, but. I think we lost our f- our f- any foothold we had in, in the game when he went off. I don't, I don't understand the manager's love of taking him off. I really don't. 15 minutes to go, just leave him on. He was, he's doing fine. Um, Obviously, he hit the post and then put the rebound into the side net. And I think that was with... <laughs> he was, it looked like he was running away to celebrate more than anything. Um, 73% pass accuracy from 23 touches. Um, aerial duels won four, two out of four ground duels won two out of four but I thought he held the ball up really well today for us again when we needed someone to do that kept hold of it earned a little you know got a little bit get a, got a little bit of space for himself created a little bit of space and then laid it off and I thought he'd done that really well today and I think the last few weeks he's looked really really sharp fitness wise like he knows and I, I just thought I was just disappointed why take him off I just don't get it. And when we took him off, we had no one holding the ball up. You know, we'll come on to this in a minute, but we just didn't really didn't have anyone holding the ball up for us. So um, I don't understand. the. F- I don't understand that he's had injury. I just don't understand the fascination with taking him off. I really don't. It just seems so so strange to me. So um, Dom, I would give a 7.4 for today's performance. Um, subs, well, we only made two subs and better really wasn't on the pitch long enough to to get anything uh again he brought committee on first which is really really interesting um i saw i was sitting right next to where like all everton's players families were um and i seen there was one of them was wearing a beto shirt but it was a new udinese shirt and i was again maybe i'm again reading too much in it i was like Shouldn't that be an Everton shirt? No. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm reading too much in it. It just felt a little bit weird that they're sitting in in a better Udinese shirt rather than a better Everton shirt. But, you know, listen, so be it. So be it. It is, it is what it is. Um, it is what it is. Um, I've seen someone else wearing a Sheffield United shirt, so who knows? Who knows? Um... <laughs> But Chimiti got brought on first, and he was a little bit disappointing. I thought he was a little bit disappointing. Um, I just, I just thought he'd give the ball away again a little bit cheaply when he had. There was one where he picked the ball up and he was running with it, and he just, he just, he just let himself be bullied off the ball. And I just said there was a couple of opportunities that we had where um, could have done better with. Although what I will say is Ariel Jules, he won four out of six. So that's why the manager likes him. Because he is more similar to Dominic Carvalho. But listen, he's been given opportunities in the last few weeks and he's done he's done okay. And it's a big summer for him now and then we'll have to see what Everton do with him or maybe do with other people. And and does that propel Schmidt Chim- into... I mean, let's... <laughs> you get the feeling one way or another he'll be our second choice striker next season one way or another. So... You know, it's a big summer for him. Manager looks like he's got a lot of faith in him. Um, I didn't think he'd done particularly well when he came on today, but that doesn't really matter. That's that's not the point. That's not the point. The manager's got faith in him. And maybe the manager's looking at him as someone who can come in and has got similar attributes to Dom. And, he, he, you know, he's had, he's had more game time in the last few weeks, and that obviously means the manager's more faith in him. And certainly more faith in him than Beto but today it just didn't really happen for him so I would give Chimiti a 6 um, and as I said that was the you know Beto came on didn't he with what a minute ago don't think he didn't touch it or anything but he, get, he, he come on um, and again the manager the manager chose the manager chose not to make any other um, any other subs which when you look at the bench I mean two goalies uh, Michael Keane Ben Coffrey Lewis Warrington Mackenzie Hunt Lewis Dobbin 
you can sort of understand why he didn't. It was there was very there's very little on that bench. Um so you can understand with us not conceding either till very, very late on. So anyway, there you go. This has been my player ratings, my last one of the season. You'll find out soon uh my player of the season. Uh we'll be looking at that this week, I believe, on the channel. So you'll get to find out all my scores put together, you know, and average it all out and see who is my player of the season. You'll find that out this week. Um but there you go. End of the season. This next one will be here before we know it. Make sure you have checked out my video from the Emirates. Uh little little vlog of the day. And uh, make sure you check out Baz's videos as well. And we'll be doing the final word later on today over on Toffee TV Premium. We'll be live on YouTube at one o'clock as well. Thanks for watching. See you later.